Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous night here in the end times in paradise in Boulder, Colorado here on this gorgeous fall evening, Tuesday, October 17th, 2017, and I am thrilled to announce it's been too long since I have had a Humpty Dumpty Tribe interview. And tonight we're going to interview my new friend Jennifer Hines. Jennifer Hines of... You Either know Jennifer, if you're down here in the Doomosphere, either from uh, Extinction Radio, which she sometimes co-hosts with my buddy Mike Farragut, and she's also got a, uh, a famous video, I think parts one and two now, um, to do with the Arctic methane bomb, which she'll tell us about. But I'm pretty much going to let Jennifer... Uh, introduce herself just to tell us a little bit about who she is and, and how she came to uh, to land in the Doomosphere. Then we're going to talk about with her, like I always do, how fucked we are and what we're going to do about it. So anyway, Jennifer, say hello to the, to the tribe and hey tell tribe. us who you are. Hey tribe, how you are you? Here. Hi, my name is Jennifer Hines and um, I guess I kind of landed here in the Doomosphere quite suddenly and unexpectedly and um, not really of my own volition, but nonetheless, here I am, and I'm a voice in the wilderness as well, a different voice than Hambone for sure, but a voice, um, a woman's voice, a powerful voice, I hope. In any case, um, for me, it happened when um, I was asked to create a presentation which um, ultimately became the Arctic Methane Monster's Rapid Rise, and um, that was back in 2014, so like three years ago, over three years ago no, now. No, no, just for me to rudely interrupt. Oh, sure. Uh, <clears throat> when you say you were asked to put together this presentation, so, <laughs> I mean, are you any more of a, uh, <laughs> no. of a trained no, university-educated <laughs> climatologist no. or biologist no, than I no. am, or are you just someone with a brain who can read the handwriting? I have all? no formal training as a climate person. Um, I haven't studied anything in school, but what I did have was an overriding curiosity and a need to know. I hate being lied to. Let me just kind of put it out there right there. That Nothing kind of gets my goat up more <laughs> um, than being lied to. And, and, and I kind of started to uncover all of this stuff. Um, okay, I'll, I'll tell you the real story, Hambone. In I'll tell you the real story. Uh, in 2006, I bought, so that was like 11 years ago now, right? Mm -hmm. I bought, I was in Mill Valley, California with my very dear cousin and my very dear sister, and we were in a novelty shop. And I bought myself a cup that um, had a map of the world, and it had an overlay on it, and it was a global warming sea level rise cup. And when you put hot liquid in it, and um, it, it would, the, the outer uh, film would, would actually become transparent, and you could see what the world would look like. Um, after 220 feet of sea level rise, that would mean after the ice sheets yeah, of Antarctica. Cool pop. I like to get that. Yeah, pop. after hey. the ice sheets yeah. of Antarctica melted, and after the ice sheets in Greenland and all the other glaciers and things like that. So that's 220 feet of sea level rise. And when I saw this cup and, and, and how it looked, I, I had to have it. So I, I bought one for myself and a couple for friends and things like that. But I took that cup to my work, and for five years, I took that cup to meetings, and I kept... So you're some sort of IT... I am. ...person? I am an IT person. An I'm an I, IT person. I'm an IT professional, believe it or not. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Been in IT for quite a long time, actually. And you, so, so you felt so you <laughs> fell down this rabbit hole in 2006. You know, it, I did. Where, where do we all start? And so, so you are what you would, I'm assuming, describe as self educated just by well, reading the I am self educated and nothing the wrong is, with that. I, I get I get I get kind of a I get I get a compunction and I get a curiosity. But the thing is with this, it was a little bit more than a hobby. It was a little bit more than a compunction and a curiosity. It became an obsession. And back in 2006, I started searching out sea level rise articles in 2006. I would Google it all the time. And there was so little information mm -hmm. back in 2006. 
So, you know, as fate would have it, I think my fate is just interlocked in with this whole mission. My sister somehow oddly won tippet, tickets to the Olympics, and so she lives in England. So I flew over in 2012 for the London Olympics oh, right. to go to the Olympic closing ceremony in London. And when I flew back to Denver, Colorado, I flew more northerly route. Ah, uh, yeah. And went right over Greenland. That was 2012. That was early September 2012. You might remember if you've been following yes. climate that back in September of 2012, 95% of the Greenland ice sheet melted. Just on the surface, we're not talking all the way through, of course, but you know, on the surface there were there were rivulets, there were there were lakes, there were moulins, there were you know, glaciers disgorging into the sea, there was, you know, tremendous blackening around the edges of the glaciers and so forth. So, <clears throat> when I saw this in 2006... In 2012. Fact, I'm sorry, 2012, excuse me, thank you, Hambo. When I saw this, when I was coming back in 2012, I was quite shocked. And I thought... So you were literally look, just looking out the window of a, 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 a commercial airline flight, like the front yeah. row seats. I was looking at it. And, and, I was, and the thing is, I, here's the other odd thing, since you're getting all the dirt out of me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually was the only one with their shade open, and uh, I was yeah. waiting. I yeah. was waiting. You know, everybody else was everybody, watching yeah. 110 channels with nothing uh, on uh, it. Of course, because, with the biggest you know, story on the planet unfolding oh my God. out the window. And, I, and when, yeah. I, when the pilot actually <laughs> came on and he said, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we will be diverting our plane on a more northerly route today, I was yeah. tremendously excited, and so I was waiting. I was watching like the little flight map and we're getting closer and closer and I was so disappointed because a big cloud cover oh, had come no. in and over Iceland, I couldn't see Iceland, we passed right over Iceland, no Iceland to be seen and I thought, oh, this is going to be a complete washout. The weirdest thing, like 50 miles outside of the uh, east coast of Greenland, the clouds completely cleared and it was a stunning view and before me I saw these craggy, gray, rugged mountains with glaciers, stinking, just cruddy, dirty, filthy glaciers running between them like rivulets yeah. and it was all just melting down and go, it hit me at an emotional level and when I saw that I was like, oh my god, we're going to lose the earth. Did you stand up on the aisles of the airplane and start <laughs> preaching the gospel to all the clueless morons watching their little, their little uh, TV screens? As you can imagine, Hambo and I did. That's just my style. All right. That's no. what I would have been doing. No, I, right. I'm kind of a quiet activist. I like to kind of process myself internally. But in any case, that was the other thing. And so that hit me at an emotional level. So... You know, the combination I already knew for six levels before I had that trip over yeah. Greenland, that sea level rise was uncontrollably escalating. So, you know, then in 2012, it just kind of hit home even more. And I dove headfirst. I was already reading the Arctic News blog spot, which if you don't read the Arctic News blog spot by Sam Crana, please, you know, check it out and have, have a look at it because it's just an amazing blog. So I was reading. And don't pay attention to my review of the Arctic blog. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's it's a good source of information, and Sam Karana and the forum that he represents do an amazing job. So, hats off to Sam Karana, and you know who you are. Um, and nobody else does. No, I have <laughs> That's just a little inside joke, I guess. <laughs> but in any case, so yeah, then then you know probably about 2011, before I actually took that trip over to Greenland. I discovered methane hydrate, and I dove head first into methane hydrate, and I became... Define methane hydrate for anybody who happened to have someone who does not know what methane hydrate is. Methane hydrate is a highly combustible, condensed greenhouse gas. It is frozen. It is, um, when it first comes out and emits, because it basically is a frozen substance, and when it gets hot, it turns directly into gas. It goes from the frozen state into the gaseous state. When it first comes out, it's a hundred. It's a hundred times more powerful than carbon mm -hmm. dioxide. That should kind of set your ears on fire right there. But if that doesn't do it, just know that there is seven times as much methane in the Arctic than there are in all the petroleum reserves on Earth. Now, somebody can go ahead and data check that if you would. I can't do the data check on that, but I've heard that numerous times. The point of it is, it's 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 abundant and. The other point of it is that when it's in the frozen state, it's inert. It is 
locked away in the freezer. However, when it gets hot, it comes out and it goes straight into the gaseous state. And if it's in the water, like say shallow water, like say perhaps possibly the Laptive Sea on the East Siberian Arctic Shelf, perhaps, it comes out and there's only about 60 meters at most of water in that very uh -huh. shallow expanse of land, which is you know, mostly methane hydrate. And it goes directly into the atmosphere and it's not absorbed into the ocean. So is what it also in the permafrost? Is it the oh, methane? Yes. Is the methane oh, yes. If you read about the melting permafrost, what you're what we're talking about is the methane hydrate. Absolutely. The well, the, the permafrost, yeah, has methane loot, laced all yeah. through it. And the thing is about the permafrost, and if you want to talk about why are we so fucked, the permafrost is melting, and it's melting because it's getting hot. You know, it's just chemistry, and we all know that. So anyway, as this permafrost melts, and as the methane starts to come out of the Laptic Sea and the Arctic Ocean and all throughout the Arctic Ocean, it goes directly into the atmosphere if it's not in, in too deep water. Then at that point, the heating potential of methane is 100 times more than the heating potential of carbon dioxide, and it's also an immediate thing. The difference between methane and carbon dioxide is methane is immediate and carbon dioxide can take up to like 20 years to reach its full heating potential. Methane is a much more active gas than carbon dioxide. So that's what happened. I, 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 I started to take this information on board. I started to synthesize it inside of me and it started to horrify me. And then what happened was I, I kind of started to wake up all at once as to the severity of the climate crisis that we are currently facing on Earth. And I started to get really stressed out because it's a lot to bear this it, knowledge. It's a lot to bear this knowledge. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. And I started to wake up at night and I started to have panic attacks because I felt on some level that I was identifying with the pulse and the spirit of the Earth and it with the pulse of civilization and I was looking around me and it was kind of like looking at an overlay of reality you know you look you go around to like you know the supermarket or wherever and everything's just fine and dandy and everyone's buying food and everything and then you look at it through another terrible terrible rabbit hole lens of of demise and all of a sudden you're seeing like these two overlays of reality at once because you see the future overlaid with yeah. the present and it fucks with you big time yes, it and does. at this time I would like to say we are so fucked so I didn't even need to get to that question oh right I'm sorry she, she, jumped, she, jumped right, she jumped right ahead to it but so so anyway so this brought you into <clears throat> oh, to all producing right. your your video that most of you have probably already seen, but it bears repeating. So give us the title of your video and right. tell folks how to find it. Your claim to fame. Right. So then I was I gave this for the Tipping Point Forum, which was uh, basically processing the tipping points of planet Earth, and uh, it was called the Arctic Methane Monsters Rapid Rise. That came out in uh, I believe it was August of 2014, so that's like three years ago, might be a little bit dated, it doesn't have any references. It was an impromptu presentation that was, happened to be recorded. Once it was recorded, it was released out on the Corelight site with a bunch of animal videos, you know, because Corelight does like animal activism in South Africa, so there was like the elephants, the panthers, the cheetahs, the giraffes, and the wildebeest and then there's the Arctic Methane Monsters <laughs> Rapid Rise. <laughs> Which is the biggest beast of all from Sub-Saharan Africa I mean, right all around from, the you, planet. You, can't, you cannot make this shit up, okay? <laughs> Just telling you right now, you cannot make this shit up. So that thing went viral and then uh, I so was... So the title of it again? The Arctic Methane Monsters Rapid Rise. And he did an update a couple of years later? I did. I did do an update, a, a particularly nerdy update, in fact. Um, I wanted to catch up and see, you know, what had happened a year later, so I released another thing, Methane Monster 2, Demise of the Arctic. That's uh, two hours and 40 minutes long in a particularly nerdy work, but it is entertaining. It's so. on YouTube as well. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Two you hours and 40 minutes. You think, you think that I can rant, guys? 
two hours and well, 40 you know, minutes. That's the thing about so, passion. I mean, I gotta, I gotta yeah. say, you, you know, when, when you're passionate about something, you're interested in it. And you don't even have to try and, you know, make it interesting and sell it because your energy is engaged in it. And it's like you and your rants. It was like me and my videos. It's the same thing. Your passion carries you through and your passion communicates with people. And then that starts to change society, consciousness, you know, in very small, small sectors of, of you know, groups of people. Is there a part three in the offing? Well, I have never made a part three. I, I made a, a bunch of uh, other kind of high impact graphic videos after that. I made um, a bunch of interviews. I did one with Peter Wadhams, which I liked. One's got music, one's got not music, depends now, on Now, is, is this on your YouTube channel? Well, I don't have a, I, none of these are on my channel. I don't publish videos on my own channel. They just all got hosted and recorded by other people. Why don't you post videos on your own channel? I guess I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> She's shy, yeah, right. I don't know. I just never have done it. But um, in any case, um, if you if you want to see my videos, I guess the best way to do it is just to Google Jennifer Hines in quotes and then maybe some keyword like maybe climate or Arctic or methane or something like that. And you'll find it right away, that and more. Um, I, I particularly recommend the Peter Wadhams interview that I had with Peter Wadhams last December. I thought that was particularly so moving. Who, who, who put that one on if you didn't put it on your own channel? Who's channel did it end up on? Well, it ended up on our videographer's channel, Rick Siegenthaler, and he does the high impact graphic imagery. So it's it's hosted there. I've never hosted So what's his channel's name? Oh uh, well this is this is it's kind of an underground underground it's, sort of thing. I mean you won't even find it because it's called Classic and New Age One or something like that. But so he's not Seymour Rocks, is he? No, no. Yeah. That's Robin Weston. Robin huh? Weston, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, if you are interested in Arctic methane, I've tried to make the best composite that I certainly know how and you can certainly easily find it, just Google my, my name, Jennifer Hines, H-Y-N-E-S, and some other keywords like climate, arctic, or methane, or something like that, you'll find it right away. If you're in a particularly nerdy mood, and uh, don't mind going deep into the rabbit hole, watch the Methane Monster 2 Demise of the Arctic, <laughs> but I, I, I take no responsibility for your state of mind afterwards. There you go. All right, now you... Somehow you morphed into Extinction Radio. How did you get hooked up with Mike Farragut and, and those guys? Was oh, well. that through your... Yeah, well, I had been on Extinction Radio as a guest like four times. You After know. the, the when, release of the Arctic Method. That's correct. Monster. That's correct. When the so that's where he found you? Right. When the Arctic Methane Monster came out, it seemed to kind of take the world by storm and got a lot of views. <laughs> Um, and Extinction Radio interviewed me in April of 2015. I was pleased to go and talk to Mike and a couple of other folks at Extinction Radio. And I was on there a few times um, over the next year or two. And then Mike Farragut contacted me, and he wanted to do kind of a, a, a set, you know, between the two of us, kind of as an ongoing sort of thing, you know. And so we started just kind of doing a little thing, you know, a little interview between us, kind of catch up what's going on. You know, everything's uh. transitory, so we did that for a little while. And then I hosted it. I did like three episodes on my own. It's a lot of work, guys. Mike Farragut does a great job for Extinction Radio it's, and the near-term human extinction. It's sport. been a little bit on hiatus recently, yeah. but uh, we, we got Mike's batteries recharged yesterday. We So... We went on there yesterday, and hopefully Mike will get that interview out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He interviewed the two of us uh, yeah, for we, six we had a, but I don't know if it's going to be on next week or six months from now, so don't hold your breath. I think that. he's going to put out put it out fairly uh, quickly, actually, because we referenced Hurricane Ophelia that was striking Ireland at that moment. As we were talking the, to him. The funny was, thing yeah. is, you know, Mike, for those of you who know, Mike Farragut is a very amazing activist in Edinburgh, Scotland, and 
as we were speaking to him, at the very moment that we were speaking to him, Hurricane Ophelia was over his head. And outside he had his window. Yeah. Outside his window, and he had all his little tomato plants inside. It was so cute. But it had already trashed Ireland. I don't know if you all saw any of the footage about Hurricane Ophelia hitting Ireland. It was absolutely amazing. So anyway, yeah, it just as fate would have it, Ophelia was on top of his head as we were speaking to him. Um, imagine that. Yeah. Uh, a, a hurricane in the UK on uh, as we're having an interview a on Extinction Radio in the UK in the UK in the middle of October <laughs> during the middle of an Extinction Radio interview. We uh, are so fucked. <laughs> All right, with that interlude. <laughs> so, t tell the folks a little bit about the Near Term Human <laughs> Extinction Support Group. Now, or how involved are that's Mike's other That's role. Mike's thing more, but um, Mike is the leader of that. I'm kind of an honorary admin member, um, but, um, you know, it's a great, it's got about, This I is guess, a Facebook thing. It's a Facebook I, group. I'm a member of Sorry, it, too. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's a Facebook group, so you can find it on Facebook, Near Term Human Extinction Support Group. Don't be put off by the name. There's a lot of good information in there. And there's about 4,500 uh, members at this point. And it's a safe place to process. It's a safe place to share news. It's a safe place to kind of speak your mind. There's a lot of things that people are going to be going through as people start to wake up to the fact that we are in the sixth great extinction on Earth. Okay, now let me ask, uh, do you play the, pe people who know me know I don't play this game, do near-term human extinction, where do you fall on, do you, do you are you going to put a year for no. when we're going to be extinct? No, no, I'm not going to put any years on anything. I learned my lesson, guys, never predict years. We don't yeah. know. The fact is the Earth is melting down. This happens once in a planet's lifetime. It's worse than Permian mass extinction, guaranteed. How fast is it going to happen? Does it matter? It's going to happen. That's the problem. And with that... <laughs> We are so fucked. So, you know, honest to God. I so, mean, so you're not saying 10 years, 100 no, years, or 1,000 no. now? No, no, wait, 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 no. Um, we're, not, we're not going that far. But I'm definitely not in the 10-year club. I mean, I don't know. But you're not in the 1,000-year club. No, either. I'm not in the 1,000-year club at all. Well, even per Stephen Hawking is in the 100-year club well, now. Well, he's uh, way too conservative. <laughs> so, uh, so, you, so if he's too conservative at 100, so... I mean, it's hard to say. Okay, let me. Let's, let's She's not in the ten-year club, uh, no. but okay, Stephen okay, Hawking guys. is too okay, conservative in the hundred-year club. Let's do the math. So that's somewhere between somewhere between We're, ten and hundred years. Right. Let's <laughs> let, okay. Let's do the math. Let's, let's do the math. What let, is your just, math? Let's, let's do just, the math. Let's just think about this. Let's do. Now, those of you who have not checked out Robin Westenra's Seymour Rocks, please. Go check it out. He's just he's written, a good guy. He's just writ, put together an amazing Arctic composite um, blog post, and here we are. What are we? October seventeenth. So go check it out. Seymour Blocks. Is that S E Y or S E E? Okay, so Seymour Blocks is S E E M O R E R O C K S. So Seymour, that was yeah. actually a horse that he had at some time, I'm not sure. But in any case, that's what it's called. You can also probably just look up Robin Westenra. In any case, he's put together a very good composite about the Arctic. And one of the things that took my, 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 my breath away, there's a video inside where there's an icebreaker going through the Arctic at 80 degrees, you know. 90 degrees is the top of the Earth. 80 degrees is just mm. 10 degrees down from it. And the ice was so thin, and it was just going and going and going, and it was just like this ice is so, so the problem with the Arctic, <coughs> this was, I think, probably like the fourth lowest sea ice area in September, because September is when the sea ice minimum is. But it's not really not all about the sea ice area. It's about the sea ice volume. The thickness of the ice is going down and, down and down and down and down and down and down and down. And guess what? When you have no thickness, you have no ice. Now, think about a drink that you have. Put some, you know, see you've got like a nice iced tea or something like that, right? Put some nice cubes in it. Fill it up with ice cubes. 
take it outside on a nice sunny day, your drink <clears throat> is going to stay roughly at the same temperature. The water in that drink is going to stay at the same temperature regardless as long as the ice is oh, present. This, yes. And now, if the ice goes away, <clears throat> all of a sudden your drink very quickly, very, very, very quickly goes up to room temperature. This is the abrupt and abrupt climate change. That's the abrupt and the abrupt climate change. Now the problem with the Arctic sea ice <clears throat> and the fact that it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner to the point of possibly, you know, inevitably, we should say zero, <clears throat> is that <clears throat> as soon as the Arctic sea ice goes away, the Arctic Ocean is going to increase in temperature. The Arctic Ocean has been staying right around the freezing point due to the conditions that have been in the Arctic up until now. But the Arctic sea ice is in the process of melting. When will it melt? That's the question on everybody's mind. Nobody knows when the Arctic sea ice is going to melt. But it's going to melt. And it might melt in 2020. I don't know. Maybe it'll melt in 2023 in September. I don't know. But what is most important is that the trend is showing the yeah. in, it's it's going to hit bottom like soon and it isn't that much in the news but as soon as it does hit it'll zero, be in the news yeah as soon as it does hit zero then what the problem is is the arctic ocean is going to go up in temperature and you know those nice methane hydrates that are laced throughout the arctic ocean in the faults, in the, you know, submerged what was permafrost in East Siberian Arctic Shelf, uh, where there just is so much, they're already gassing out. If you look at the methane charts, you will see that in 2007, there was a change in the way that the methane was gassing out. And it's gone up ever since then. So uh, we, we think, we look, when we look at those charts, we say 2007 was the year when it really kind of started uh, to take off into the point of no return, and the rest of it is just manifestation. So we're 10 years into it. We're 10 years into it, and there are plumes in the, in the Arctic that are like a kilometer wide of methane gassing out. Now you imagine that methane all hitting the atmosphere, what's going to happen? It's going to get hot. Well, it's going to get hot. It was 80 degrees. Well, it was 80 degrees in uh, Denver, Colorado today is 87 in San Francisco. I was talking to my friend in LA. She said it was 94 at her house in Los Angeles on October 17th. So uh, it'll be fun times in a few years. Now all your talk about the, the Arctic and climate change, is, is this, does this mean you, you think climate change is the only reason we are so fucked or is it just the most uh, the, the, the most obvious to to a few people on the planet are there are there assuming that climate change did not exist that we could suck this shit right out of the air tomorrow and we could reflect it back are we still fucked? If we're, we, we're still fucked. We're still fucked. We're still so fucked. I, I just wanted to say we fucked. are so fucked. Now the reason I'm going to say that um, so so quickly is there uh, climate is one thing now we're just going to go through the rest of climate okay do you want to play let's pretend because that's i love playing let's pretend let's play let's pretend all right let's pretend that all the humans on earth of which there are what seven, seven and a half billion years? no one knows no you know guys no one knows how many of us Naked apes, there are. They say seven. I, I think there's probably more than eight billion of us. But we're, who the, we're, anyway, there's too diseased. damn. There's too damn many of us. That's how many. Whatever anyway. it is, let's just pretend there's magic. Okay. Yes. Let's pretend that all of the carbon dioxide emissions from human beings, especially, we're not talking about anything else in the world, just human beings, like our outgassing of all the coal we burn, all the cars we drive, all the civilization that we have. Let's just pretend it stopped. Boom. Stopped dead. In that case, we are so fucked. <laughs> the reason is, and I'm sorry to say this, I really am, it's, it's, it's a hard truth, and I know we're being a little bit frivolous and, 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 and entertaining right now, but the, the fact of the matter is, this is a very, 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 situa uh, very serious situation, and the reason that this is going to happen regardless is because there are things called um, feedbacks 
and there are things called runaway feedbacks, and these are diagrammed in some detail, so you can go to the Arctic News blogspot and check it out. But in any case, um, the feedbacks are starting to set in. Now that's just climate. We can talk about the other the other factors soon, but let's just before we talk well, about those and other. And that would have to erupt into twenty more thirty minute rants. So uh, oh my, that, that'll have to be. Few. I just wanted to see if you were, if you believe that this was a one trick pony uh, All right. facing the planet or a. I, I I see about forty horsemen of the apocalypse going on about Oh yeah. Now. No, I mean if we're not so fucked on climate and if we're not so fucked on the runaway feedbacks that are currently in play and kind of working their way of their own volition. If you check what's happening up in Canada with the perm permafrost, if you check what's happening into the carbon sinks becoming carbon sources in the Amazon and all the forests, that's happening too. We'll, you know, talk, that's about, we'll talk about that tomorrow. On like this climate is, change this is just all climate, yeah. but let's not, let's pretend. Okay, let's continue our game of let's pretend. Let's pretend, A, all carbon emissions stopped. B, all um, feedback started to stop and things like that. There are other things other than climate which is going to mean that we are so fucked because there is the population bomb, there is the <coughs> nuclear bomb, <coughs> there are a lot of bombs. A lot of bombs. Yeah. I mean, you, you can just like start to put it, it all has to do with civilization, it's all interlocked, it's everything that we have created basically is going to be our undoing, but we're not really allowed to see it right now. So there is this very strange overlay that, you know, those of us who've woken up, <clears throat> gone down this rabbit hole, understand what's going on. It is a strange experience to walk around and have this overlay. And I just well, can kind of see like the future overlaid with the present. And it's, it's such, do you ever have that experience? I, I walk in two worlds. Yeah, simultaneously, uh, yes. right? I got one foot in each world. Right. You, you pretty much have to. Uh, so, it, it, it doesn't sound like you're too hopeful for the civilization, the species. So let's start out on a uh, on a species wide. Uh, in, after your and obviously th this woman spends a lot of time researching this. From a civilization wide, species wide reaction to this is is is. is are we going to turn this freight train around through solar panels and windmills and electric vehicles and uh, what was I reading, uh, biofuels from seaweed, and, uh, or, or are we going to stick a fork in us? There you go. Well, you know, geoengineering is a great idea. I hope they can do carbon sequestration. The only thing that's going to... The thing that's is, the sucking it out of the sky. You can't. You can't. I mean, there is too much. And there's not the will. We are... A, I have to say it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But we are a flawed and selfish and greedy species. We have moments of brilliance. We have moments where we're selfless. We have moments of greatness and creativity. All those things make us human. But you know what, guys? <laughs> In our core, we are not nice creatures. We are simians. We are, <laughs> we are, <laughs> we are, we, we fight. We love war. We consider nuclear war, which to me seems absolutely inconceivable to burn the very biosphere that's giving us life. I cannot even believe that these people live on the same planet. I cannot believe that we're sharing this planet with these people that are thinking to burn the biosphere and make the place radioactive. I, 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 am, I, am, I am sorry to be here, but we are here now, and it is our, our fate or whatever. We are here now, and you can either witness this with your eyes open, or you can kind of have all sorts of other reactions. And you know what? It doesn't even matter. I don't even try and wake people up anymore. I don't try and even convert anyone. I just say... To anyone who wants to hear it. Yeah. So, so let's, let's wind up this, as I always do, at, at the individual level. Now, where I, 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 I've, I've talked to Jennifer a couple of times, but I really didn't get to know Jennifer until this weekend where we got together at this uh, 
which I oversimplify as a depressed collapsitarian support group. <laughs> About a dozen of us who understand. What a bunch of moany old folks, uh, right? It, 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 you know, it, it actually, guys, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't quite as bliss many as, as I, was, I was worried about. Uh, anyway, we just finished this three-day course uh, with the, that Dean Walker and, um, and Carolyn Baker were leading here in Boulder. Great three days. Uh, I'm, I, am I any more prepared uh, to face the end times after this three-day course. I don't know. what My takeaway was that uh, community, you know, it does help to find some like-minded folks just so you can talk this crazy subject without people looking at you, you know, like you're a damn lunatic. But anyway, so what we were... What, what I thought we were going to talk about, although at this point I don't know how much we did talk about, what can we do at an individual level from here on out? And I'm going to put I'm, I'm going to put this as delicately as I as I can. Je Jennifer and I obviously have reacted to this. Uh, we're we're at the same place <laughs> with our we are so fuck side. But she and I have had radically different, just our own personal life reactions to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to live in an absolute, in a beautiful four bedroom, three bath home with a two car garage on the green belt in South Austin. And I'm a homeless person living in a pickup truck. Obviously, Jennifer. Is not a homeless person living in a. She, she, <laughs> she, she, she's <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> she is living. In, is still living in the gorgeous home in the sun. But but you do have what three years? I three do. months or three? You should see the load of food. Look, she's guys. Got. Look, I, I I'm a wimp. Okay. Look, I don't want to starve to death. And I just took matters into my own hands. And I was like, I because I've been seeing this. And there's sometimes this panic would come over me. I'm like, oh crap. I've got to go order food. And so I would just I just started ordering. Food and I've got like three years of food downstairs. I know where I'm coming with this, with this shit because I got about three days of beanie weenies in the back of my the truck. The thing is, I'm not a farmer. I'm not capable. I can barely grow a tomato. God help me. I can think. I can talk. That's about it. You know. So when this freaking you know thing comes down. I don't know, man. What are you gonna do? Well, you're probably gonna be out in the mountains somewhere. Uh, I'm moving in. I'm moving in with Bigfoot. I'm still waiting. But so, as I say, obviously we have reacted differently. We're at the same place, but we've reacted because because what the fuck do you do? As an individual, what the fuck do you do at this point? From this point forward. I mean, just to live out your life with this it, knowledge. You know? what I mean, is your here's the deal is here, and and I'm I'm sorry, you. I'm sorry, 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 because I know, and I, it's not like I'm trying to dash anybody's hope, and I'm really not, and I think that we have a moral obligation to leave the earth in as good a space as we possibly can. I think civilization is going to fall. Whether we're all going to become extinct. I mean, who knows? Honest to God, humans are very resilient. Maybe we'll become tribal. I sure know it's not going to look like it does today, you know? So I think that's inevitable. You know, everything is on the hockey stick. We all know Mikey, Michael Mann's, you know, hockey stick, right? You know, we're right in that little sweet spot. You all can see it. Look at those hurricanes. Look at those fires. Look at that hurricane in Ireland happening just yesterday or the day before. Ophelia. I mean, we are definitely living in the end times, and yeah, things living are living in the hockey stick. I mean, I think it's God bless them. God bless the geoengineers and the people who think that carbon sequestration and you know refreezing <laughs> the Arctic with little ice machines or something <laughs> in the hell is going to do it. God bless you and go do it. And 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 and. Best. I don't know about the chemtrail part of it. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. But, I don't know about the SRM. But but this. you know the thing is. I don't think technology is going to do it. I don't think technology is going to get us out of this. I think don't that think so, huh? I don't. I Damn. don't. I think. Well, I don't because here's the thing: is here. 
we've we've started this flywheel. This y'all y'all ever do pottery? You know, you have a potter's wheel and you kick it the old fashioned kind that you have to kick, right? The heavier it is, the harder it is to start getting it when you have to go. You ever do a really heavy old manual potter's wheel? You have to kick that thing like a motherfucker, right? I've never done one, so I don't know. Well, once that thing gets going, you take your feet off of it and you start pushing down on that clay and you start melding that clay and that thing has its own volition. That thing, once you get that potter's wheel going, it's going for a while. We kicked the potter's wheel of Earth hard with our carbon emissions, with our civilization, with our overpopulation, with every single thing that we've done, you know, with all the coal burning, etc. This potter's wheel has now started to move and it's coming to life. It's going at this point. We can take our foot off of it and it's actually already going. Now, to think that geoengineering and carbon sequestration to the amount of carbon that we're actually putting into the atmosphere and then to bring us back to 350 parts per million? Ain't happening. No. It uh, I thought it was 290 we were aiming for. Well, you know, there's the 350.org. There is that, there is that 350 Now, when I was org. born, I think it was about 320, you know. Yeah. I came into a pristine world. You never thought this was going to happen? I never thought this was going to happen. Here we are. We're reacting to it in the only way that we know how. This is a very emotional issue, and different people are going to react to it in different ways. Yes, they are. <laughs> All and here right, we are. Jennifer Hines, Cheers. would you like to, uh, let's toast, yeah, let's toast to the late great planet Earth. Uh, get out there and, and drink your wine while you still can, and if you were waiting for some uh, fine California wine, vintage 2017, from the Napa Valley, I think. Uh, fine wines well, from the Napa minute. Valley, 2017. No, what, that's what's not going to happen. What's that gonna, <laughs> What, what is a bottle of, of Napa I mean, Valley wine tragic. 2017 going to sell for? The fires in California. That is fucking tragic. But they're, they're saying even the vineyards. The, but, but even the grapes that are there are smoked. I love this. They're, they're talking about what? The, the, that, that the grapes that didn't burn, they're going to have this smoky taste, kind of like mezcal. Oh. And that one there, I don't get this one at all. That the marijuana farmers, that 20% of the weed farms <laughs> burned. But but they're saying that even the, the 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 marijuana that didn't burn, the buds are gonna have this weird smoky taste. And I'm going, what the fuck? Is this some strange 2017 uh, apocalyptic? How do you business? know when you're smoking weed that your bud has a smoky taste? I mean, you said it, anyway. That's a whole nother. <laughs> It's ugly. There it's will not, not be good. a vintage 2017. It's not good. And though. the only reason we laugh is so we don't cry. Because really, to be honest with you yes, guys, there were a lot this of tears is the this most... Mo well, there were. There were. We're all mourning the earth in our own ways. And right now, we're kind of having fun with it. But let's never, ever lose sight of the fact that this happens once in a planet's history. Our planet is 4.5 billion years old. We are moving into the sixth grade extinction a thousand times faster than we moved into the Permian mass extinction. Put that in your pipe yeah. and smoke it. Well, so in a way, it's the sixth time it's happened, but as I say, this is the first biotocide, as someone was talking about. Oh, well. Or the Marana scene, as I call it. It is the Marana scene, it and welcome, the, welcome to the Marana scene. Welcome to the Marana scene. And you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm sorry, we didn't. You know, all we can do is is react to it. And I choose to be awake. I mean, you know, knowledge is a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing to bear all this knowledge on a day to day basis. But given the choice of being awake or being asleep, what would you rather be? I. <laughs> I don't know. It's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Well, I, that's I'm right. Still, I'm still erring on the side of a weight, but... I know. Well, but I, we, okay, I, I will continue question. to warn people, if you're just now coming down this rabbit hole, go back to sleep. Don't. Like, if you're watching uh, this video... Here, wait, wait. If you're watching <laughs> this video, turn it off, 
and don't ever watch uh, another yeah. one again because it's not good for your mental health. No, it's not. It's, no, it really isn't. It's not isn't. good for your it mental really, health. It really I mean, isn't. It is too much for a human being to bear. Yeah, from this point forward, there's not a fucking thing you can do about it. It really isn't. It's so happening. So I, I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know. How do we uh, react to well, it, it, it? You know, if I could take that blue pill and stick my head back up my ass if I wouldn't choose it. But once you're, once you're down this rabbit hole, guys... Y you know, it's I a lot of information. I'm, yeah, I don't think I'm coming out of it. I came out of the space alien rabbit hole. I came somewhat out of the Carlos Castaneda rabbit hole. But I've been in this one uh, eight years. And it sounds like you've been, you and I have been in about the same time. And uh, once you've been in a rabbit hole eight years, it's you're, you're, you're stuck. So anyway, any parting comments for the tribe before we wrap up this? <laughs> Uh, oh, whatever you know, we've been good luck to everybody out there, and you know, good luck with with the, the freaking apocalypse. It's it's a lot to react to. Um, don't watch the news every day. Don't watch all of Hambone's rants. Yeah, well, I mean, I, if you want to get mentally deranged, okay, but don't watch all of Hambone's rants. <laughs> get some exercise, meditate, take a walk in the woods if you can. Try and enjoy. Sure. I mean, the thing is, we're in a fleet. It's it's good to know that we're in a fleeting. We're in a transitory time right now, and things are changing quickly, quickly, quickly. Don't get into hypernormalization. That's the other thing. Don't believe. Don't 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 fall asleep. You know. Don't just kind of like get in. Oh well, it's the next. You know, tenth hurricane this year. Oh well, you know. Well, what's on the news tonight, honey? I mean, you know, it's. It's a strange time we're living in, so good luck to all of you. Um, stay in your hearts. Be in love if you can. That's the best thing. Community is the best thing in these times. It's good to share. Um, you know, we're all fucked up. I'd like to say parting comment. We're so fucked. And that's pretty much it. Okay. And get out there and enjoy it while we still can. That's enjoy it while you can. It's, life is fleeting, and so are we. The only thing is death and uh, taxes is what they say. I'm not Speak sure for so yourself. Well, I don't pay taxes. <laughs> All right, guys. Jennifer Hines, we do appreciate it. And uh, go watch her. One more time, plug your Arctic methane. Oh, right. Well, there's two of them, really. Um, Arctic Methane Monsters Rapid Rise and Methane Monster 2, Demise of the Arctic. Easy to find. H-Y-N-E-S. Jennifer Hines. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. We will be back tomorrow with my climate change meltdown roundup rant. Bye, guys.